Tom, tell me a little bit about let's let's start with with the seltzer. What was sure. the what was the thought behind bringing this to market, and why why add it to your already popular beer uh, uh, what's the word repertoire or quiver or whatever you want to call it sure. you know, inventory. Yeah, so the seltzer idea came about about a year and a half ago. Um, obviously, seltzers have been getting more popular in general. Um, they are a good alternative to beer. Um, there's been a, a trend that we can't ignore uh, for low calorie, low sugar, um, sort of beer adjacent products. Um, this was, you know, really driven by our staff. Our staff was very excited to offer something that was really outside of our, you know, our, our traditional repertoire of beers. Um, so we are indeed the seltzer for over a year uh, before we sent it to market. I wanted to make really sure that this was something that we could produce at scale uh, before we started uh, putting it in a can and sending it out to um, you know, the local bars and restaurants uh, and the retailers. So there was a lot of work that went into it on our end, uh, but we had a fair amount of time during the pandemic to sort of uh, try all these things behind the scenes before we um, you know, launched them and launched the, the program in general. Gotcha. Um, and so there's, there's, well, there's five different kinds, right? There's a variety pack that has a number of different flavors, and then there's OJ. Right? Yes. Is, is that it, right? Um, we're, we'll be releasing our next uh, seltzer in this lineup um, starting, I believe, on Cinco de Mayo. Uh, we're hoping to have the next one out, um, which will be a partnership with the Holy Donut. Uh, we'll be doing a margarita seltzer with um, modeled after their margarita donut. Um, so the idea for these was to sort of make them a crossover between craft beer and seltzer. Uh, we use 100% natural ingredients in these. These are fruit puree, <laughs> these are fruit puree um, as the only addition to just the seltzer base. Um, so they're, they're super natural. They taste, you know, very, very fresh. Um, and they're made to sort of co-align with craft beer. That was the one thing I needed to know. <laughs> That's fine. Um, but the OJ you can only get here at the, at the, at the tap room? For now. That'll be something that will be hitting distribution here shortly. Uh, we've sent some kegs out so far already. Uh, we have a lot of it brewing right now uh, in, in the facility, which uh, will start to make its way out to distribution here in the next month or so. Molly was saying you guys can't keep it in stock. It's been, uh, it's been exciting, I mean, to offer something, you know, like we mentioned, outside of our traditional you know, set of um, beer options and have it get so much attention. Um, I think there's a lot going on with these that, um, you know, the people are looking for. Um, there's the, you know, the fact that they are lower ABV, um, lower calorie, lower sugar, um, but they're also, you know, backed by a charitable contribution um, that I think really strikes a chord with people here in Maine who are looking to, you know, make um, conscious decisions about where their money's going. Um, and then, yeah, it's just a good alternative. Once I think summer rolls around, these are going to be something that people will be seeking out. So uh, tell me a little bit more about the Sebago Clean Waters Initiative, how that partnership began. And, and if you don't mind, tell me the nuts and bolts of, I think, it, is, it, is it 1% or 2% of proceeds from these go right. to that initiative? How does it work? Yeah, so we approached Sebago Clean Waters, which is an organization we've been in contact with for a number of years now. Um, obviously, water and where our water comes from is very important to our process, not only for seltzer, but also for beer. And, you know, the preservation of our water source has been an initiative that we've taken seriously since we opened, um, really. We have phenomenal water here in Southern Maine, and it's one of the major reasons why we have so many great breweries here in Southern Maine. Uh, so for us to be able to give back through an organization like Sebago Clean Waters was really something that we wanted to put at the forefront this year. Um, craft beer is a very romanticized industry and to be able to shine a spotlight on somebody who's doing something at the ground level um, that's so important here to the economy and to the culture of Southern Maine, uh, we really wanted to help shine some light on their efforts um, and give back with you know, a monetary contribution as well. So 1% of the revenues from the seltzer, uh, of all of the seltzer that we uh, put out will be going to Sebago Clean Waters. When does that begin? It already began. Um, so we wrote our first check to them um, at the end of the first quarter, um, which just started. We just launched the products, but we're hoping that that will sort of steamroll uh, into a lot more attention uh, to the initiative, as well as um, you know some monetary backing. From what I understand, uh, they just made their first uh, sizable land purchase using commercial contributions from businesses like ours. Um, they have to sort of hit a threshold uh, I believe it's of $20,000 before they use that fund 
to uh, make a land purchase, and I believe they just made their first land purchase, um, which will help preserve the area around Sebago Lake and thus, you know, continue to protect the water source that we use here for our beer and our seltzer. Uh, you don't have to answer any question you're uncomfortable with, but I will ask you, 1% of your revenue for this for the first quarter, how much was that? Um, I've got to look at the accounting. That's not my department. Um, but I believe it was around $1,000. Um, oh, great. Yeah, for the first contribution. It was, I think, just south of $1,000. And we launched these, you know, just over a month and a half ago. So um, so it's been, yeah, it's been a, a great start. Awesome. Um, I think you answered all my questions on, on that front. I mean, because we, we've talked about how important it is. I mean, um, when you're able to, so let me put it this way. When you're able to see that, you know, after just a month of, having these available to people you sure. to contribute that much. Can you imagine what it's going to be like after quarter two, three, four? We're hopeful that it continues. And not only that the, um, you know, that the sales increase and therefore the contributions, but also more people uh, who are either in our industry or in similar industries, uh, maybe look at this initiative and are willing to maybe hitch their wagon to it as well. Um, and hopefully, you know, through our combined power of local small business, we're able to preserve a fair enough amount of, the area around Sebago Lake to, you know, keep it in the pristine condition that it is today. Are there other breweries that are doing a similar thing? So there's um, a coalition that's been formed um, called the Maine Brewshed Alliance. Uh, and that was part of, it's an organization that we're a part of. Uh, it's uh, a coming together of Maine breweries to raise awareness um, for the efforts that um, are, you know, being put forth to protect the Sebago Lake watershed um, and the, the watersheds throughout the state of Maine. Um, ours being specifically Sebago Lake. But um, it's a coalition of breweries who are basically um, joining in an effort to raise awareness and to um, you know, help tell the public that this is something that's you know, important to us and should be important to, to them as well. Um, so that, that coalition is something that we joined early on. It's fairly new, but um, has started to make you know, real gains to um, raise awareness around the topic. Awesome. How does that feel? Good. Um, you know, growing up in Southern Maine, you know, making quick trips up to Sebago Lake um, for most of my life, you know, it's a, it's a great place. It's kind of, you know, the center point for Maine in the summer in a lot of ways. And uh, not only to protect it for the sake of, you know, recreation, um, our drinking water, but also now that we're so intimately tied to it where our product is mostly water and we rely on it to make our product as good as we can, um, to be able to give back is, you know, just a full circle experience. Cool. Um, you want to shift gears? Sure. Do you, do you feel comfortable with what we've covered with Seltzer? Yeah, I, 